Hey guys, today we'll be taking a look at the 2019 BMW M2 competition and uh, before I forget, next week we're gonna be reviewing this uh, beautiful Lamborghini Gallardo so uh, do subscribe if you don't wanna miss it out and yeah What's up guys, Syed here and uh, today we have the 2019 BMW M2 competition So before I begin, I want to give a special thanks to sgcarbrokers.com for making this uh, car review possible uh, If you're not familiar with uh, sgcarbrokers.com, uh, basically they are like a website that is just a all-in-one platform where you can sell your car, renew COE, scrap your car, get a car loan and all that stuff so uh, you can check it out, I'll put a link in the description below Now uh, back to this car, this uh, BMW M2 competition that I'm driving is actually brand new It only has about 503 kilometers on the clock So uh, because the engine hasn't run in yet, I was told not to rev this car past 4000 RPM Do you know how much self-control you need not to rev a BMW M car? Do you? I don't think you do uh, that's just me being dramatic but yeah it's difficult you know instead of keeping my eyes on the road i have to keep my eyes on the ref make sure i don't pass 4000 some things you have to know about this bmw m2 um this is the bmw m2 competition and it replaces the current bmw m2 so you can't get the regular m2 anymore i mean you can but you probably have to get it from parallel importers so before i go further um i'll give you some context about this car so whatever i say makes more sense so this car has a 3 liter 6 cylinder engine that has two turbochargers okay this car has the s55 engine which replaces the outgoing m2 that has the n55 engine but this one has been detuned shit that was uh, auto start stop okay i don't know why you need auto start stop in a freaking m car but anyway Back to the engine, yeah, this car has the S55 engine that was lifted off the F82, F83, BMW M3 and M4 And uh, this car is, the engine on this car has been detuned however So this one comes with 405 horsepower and about 550 newton meters of torque Those are very big figures, those are massive amounts of power for such a small car But this car has a tune, um, so this car produces about 500-ish horsepower Something like that, so yeah, it's ridiculous acceleration wise this car does 0 to 100 in about 4.2 seconds on paper uh, i think with this tune definitely it will the 0 to 100 time will be lower than that it will be faster than that I mean. transmission wise this car comes with a 7 speed mdct gearbox so i think in this car those are the only specs that matter <laughs> Um, I can talk about other specs later on if you know for if for you BMW nerds out there But okay, let's get straight to the point. What is this BMW M2 competition like to drive? So this car is obviously very fast the suspension I have to say uh, it's some one of the first things I noticed about this car as you are driving it the suspension is quite firm um, but it's livable it's definitely livable it's not too harsh but as you know if you compare to your normal sedan or coupe or whatever uh, definitely it's more the suspension is firmer but still livable and I can feel just how solid the chassis of this car is you know it's so it makes the car so agile and so swift like you put it around corners it just it's just so you know you can feel how good the chassis is it makes the car very tossable around corners you know like you see you see that it's i don't even have to go that fast to feel that the chassis is really solid This car also has massive brakes. I think there are six sport calipers in the front. So the pedal feedback in this car is really good. 
Okay, so let's talk about some of the driving modes that you have in the car. So, uh, yeah, over here you have this. Um, you can with this button here to the side of the gear lever, you can change things like your. You can change the driving modes. You have sports plus, sport and efficient mode. I'm gonna put it in sports plus. I think. Yeah. Um, the one below it is uh, is blank, but the one right below the blank button is this steering wheel button, and this is uh, basically to change the. Okay, let me change it back to efficiency. Okay, so, yeah. So uh, the button uh, over here, the one with the steering wheel icon, is um, for you to change the steering setup of the car so you can change between sports plus sport and comfort. So comfort will make it a bit lighter. And then you have sport will make make it uh, heavier, and then you have sports plus, which will yeah make it very chunky and heavy kind of feel, very sports car like. Speaking of uh, driving modes, below you have below the gear lever you have this button with three kind of like lines here. Basically, what this does is you can change the shift times of the how fast the gear uh, shifts, so you can make it like shift slower faster yeah you can choose it from using this button here uh, you don't get a lot of wind or road noise and the exhaust sound is a bit uh, I was expecting the exhaust to be a bit loud but then again M cars are not known for their loud really bassy kind of exhaust I think AMGs are known for that On this car is just immense it's I feel really confident driving this car fast like it, it just gives you that sense of confidence you know you can push the car and you know that it will still grip this is a kind of car that you will like find excuses you know you every any any small excuse you have you will find it just to be able to take this car out for a drive one thing I like about M cars like the M2 M3 M4 it's you know when you open the engine bay you see that V carbon fiber strut brace it is like the centerpiece of the engine you know you immediately when you open it you see that you know it's an M car so by the way this car is also uh, longer wider and lower than the regular 2 series I've driven the regular 2 series before I think it was the 218 but I drove the convertible and to be honest that car wasn't really that fun to drive I was expecting it to be very fun and exciting but it just wasn't I think I don't know whether it was the it was because it's a convertible and you know you don't have the roof so the structural integrity of the car is compromised I don't know if that's the reason why it's not that fun to drive but this car is just completely different animal but visibility wise it's actually pretty good for such a sporty car to be honest <laughs> So uh, exterior design, I think this car looks, uh, it's a good looking car but it's not uh, super aggressive. Um, the front, the top half of the car looks, it doesn't look very aggressive but the bottom half looks super aggressive. You see what I mean? Top half looks okay, not very aggressive and then BAM! <laughs> bottom half is super aggressive. Another thing I like the side mirrors here. These are the same side mirrors you get in the M3 CS, so that's uh, it's quite nice that they brought it over to the M2. One thing I don't like about the exterior is the rear tail lights. I think they are a bit too plain for an M car. Interior-wise, as you expect from a BMW, the interior quality is really good. It comes with this 8.8 inch uh, screen with the BMW uh, iDrive, and it comes standard with uh, Apple CarPlay but not Android Auto. BMW iDrive, I think I mentioned before, it's one of the easiest uh, infotainment systems to use in my opinion. It's just so simple, everything just, it makes sense basically. Like, when you touch on a button, it does what you expect it to do. Uh, this start-stop button here looks like something you get from AliExpress, <laughs> to be honest. You get M-stitching all over the car to remind you that this is an M car, not a regular 2 Series. You get the M-stitching here on the steering wheel, on the door on the seats even like this gear alcantara cover thing here center console you get your m badging on the gear lever here on the display in the middle here so yeah uh you get m stitching everywhere and by the way this m logo here uh glows in the dark so uh that's quite cool as well 
practicality wise i would say i'm quite surprised this is actually quite a practical car the door bins here they are not like very deep but it's a very big compartment like you have four different compartments here for you to keep your stuff center console here is not too deep but uh one thing i like is that okay, this uh, wireless charging tray here it clips your phone into position so when you are driving around quickly uh, i shouldn't say recklessly but you know when you are driving around pretty fast it uh, stays in position so it doesn't like you know uh, roll about so that's a nice touch glove box is also not yeah it's actually not too small yeah uh, speaking of practicality in the rear um, you get you can sit two adults because there's a like center kind of a plastic tray in the middle and you also get a very big transmission tunnel because this is a rear wheel drive car you can fit two adults in the back you get some knee room uh, i tested it and um, put, putting this passenger seat into my original driver's position you get some knee room and you get uh, some headroom as well so um, considering how small this car is the rear seats are actually quite practical and lastly uh, practicality of the boot it's about 390 liters um, i think it's considering how again considering how small this car is it's actually not too bad so overall what do i think of this car so one thing i like about this car is that the advantage it has over its rivals like the mercedes cla 45 amg or even the renault megan rs or audi rs3 is that this car has a six cylinder engine whereas those cars have a four cylinder in the cla 45 and the renault megan rs they have a four cylinder and the audi rs3 only has a five cylinder not only but it has a five cylinder so uh, I think in the engine department, I think this has a bit more of an advantage. This car is also quite small, so it's easy to park and navigate around. Um, it can be civilized when you want it to be, with the exception of the uh, ride, because it's a bit firm. But other than that, it's you can daily drive the car, no problem whatsoever. And the last thing I like about the car, which is I think the biggest thing, is that this car is super fun to drive. What I dislike about this car, there's not much that I dislike. I think the biggest would probably be the way the rear of the car looks. It's just a bit... You don't really get the kind of feeling uh, you get when you see an M3 or an M4 from the rear. You know, those cars look very like aggressive, very like garam, but this one looks a bit tame from the back. So yeah, that's one thing I dislike. Um, other than that, you know nothing else there's not much else that i dislike about this car it's really amazing so overall uh, if you are looking for a seriously fun car to drive and a car that's driver focused a car that's uh, not too flashy then i think this is a serious contender i think the only downside is probably the price it's uh, three hundred and thirty three thousand uh, dollars as of the time of filming so it's a bit expensive but then again cars in singapore are expensive so um yeah I think that's about it for this review. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, do subscribe because the next video will be of the Lamborghini Gallardo in front. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.